Welcome to the Student Engagement Forum at BGSU. This is a conversation between three campus leaders, moderated and hosted by myself, Andrew Bailey. I am the Editor-in-Chief of the BG News and the President of the BGSU Chapter of the Society of Professional Journalists. As a student leader, engagement in student organizations is very important to me. Our goal here today is to discuss issues facing undergraduate student engagement on campus. Given the varied backgrounds and expertise of our three panelists, we can hopefully come up with some strong action steps to remedy problems that almost all student or undergraduate student organizations face. First, we'll introduce our guests. We're going to start with you, Chloe. Um, my name is Chloe Cox, and I am the Director of Minority Coalition for the Undergraduate Student Government. Alex? Uh, my name is Alexander Charlotte, and I am the President of the Undergraduate Student Government. Jody? Uh, my name is Jody Webb, and I'm Associate Vice President for Student Affairs. Great. So, let's uh, start off with outreach. Campus Fest is each semester is one of the premier ways that student orgs uh, show themselves and communicate to students you know, on a massive scale. And it's very heavily promoted by BGSU. So how do individual organizations continue this outreach after Campus Fest ends? Who wants to start us off? I can start off. Um, I think that a good way to be able to outreach outside of Campus Fest is with things like social media. I think that's a really, really big thing for our generation is getting your word out there, getting your passion out there, and posting fun videos, posting your flyers for your events. I think that's a good way. And then also getting organizations that you're connected to to repost your flyers and your events that are upcoming. Yeah, I agree with that. I think one of the other things, too, that uh, can typically be done is students can table in the union. Uh, that can get set up pretty easily. And then uh, you, know, you can sit there for an hour or two and talk to students as they walk by. Uh, it's a great way to kind of get people to come over if they don't know too much about your organization. Uh, the other thing, too, I would recommend is uh, if student organization leaders uh, want to increase engagement, it's really great to get out there and participate and go to events of other student organizations. Show your support for them. Uh, go see what they're up to. And then you can build some of that networking and those connections. And then uh, you make friends that way. And uh, they'll learn about your organization and maybe come see what you're doing. And it just helps build that networking on campus. Okay. I would just add, I think that the the members of the organization are, are sometimes the best ambassadors. And certainly the Campus Fest format allows for that. But I think that the organizations also have to think about, you know, outside of their regular activities, uh, meetings, et cetera, that they really should always be in a, a bit of a recruitment mode. And I think it's a good way to um, bring people into the organization when they know that there's going to be a familiar face there. and so. I think that that's always really important that we're always, as members, that we're always out there promoting our organization and encouraging that involvement. So Alex brought up tabling in the union. What other kind of resources can student orgs utilize like that to do outreach, you know, physically on campus? Uh, I mean, one thing that I that I that comes to mind for me is um, SOAB, which is the Student Organization Allocation Board. Uh, if a student organization wants to set up an event on campus that can help with recruiting or, or promoting or just trying to get people out to uh, come do something specific for their organization, they can apply for funding through that. Um, and if they get that funding, it can really help set them up for success for their event and really draw in students to, that, to what they're trying to do. So um, what kind of things does USG do to, to continue outreach uh, throughout the semester? We're able to work with a lot of people. I think because... Um, Everyone in USG is so different, and we all have different experiences, and we all kind of have different backgrounds as well. We're able to connect with the people that we work with outside of USG, and in that, we're able to collaborate with other organizations that we're connected to, uh, bring our friends into the mix, sometimes even bring our families into it if we're doing things like charity. So I think that it's good that if you are a part of one organization, don't be afraid to step out of that and um, kind of bring the two worlds together. Okay. Yeah, Chloe's uh, been working on an event now for a couple <laughs> months. That's tomorrow. Yeah. Um, that is perfectly fitting into this question, some collaboration on that. I don't know if you want to touch on that a little bit and, and some yeah. of the work that's gone into that. Yeah, sure. So the event is called What is Colorism? And we're going to be having a conversation about how the hue of your skin impacts your cultural experiences, your societal experiences, and I'm partnering with the Asian Student Union 
as well as Multicultural Affairs, ICRE, and Sakoti. And we're gonna be having a discussion-based event based off of um, our experiences with colorism, what it means to us, ways that we can um, kind of combat these stereotypes, these issues in our individual communities and toward one another, and ways that we can be allies for each other, so. Okay. Yeah. So moving on to the uh, next topic we have, I think an important factor for a student interested in joining an org is that they feel welcome. Mm -hmm. They want to feel like they belong there on day one. So how do you create that environment in an org, especially when a prospective member might show up to any given meeting if they're allowed to do so? Yeah, I can speak to that a little bit. Um, I joined USG when I was uh, a freshman. It was the first org that I found at Campus Fest and really excitedly jumped in. Uh, I came to the next meeting just as um, kind of someone to sit and watch. I wasn't really sworn in or a senator or anything at that point. I just wanted to kind of see what the organization was about. Um, and one of the student leaders at the time, Marcus Goolsby, came over um, and he actually talked to me. He wanted to know why I was there. He wanted to know, um, you know, not in a kind of weird way. He wanted to just know <laughs> like how he could help and, and how he could help get me involved in the org. Uh, so he took my name down, he took my email, and he reached out to me that night uh, and helped me through the process to actually get in USG. And um, ever since that moment, like that's kind of, really been my mentality and how I want to approach USG and how I want to kind of draw in new members. Um, and I think that's, that's really important uh, to kind of make that connection early as soon as a student is interested in USG uh, because those connections could span, like in my case, four years um, just from that little interaction and, and kind of my first impressions of USG. So um, I would say just really kind of making sure that as soon as, soon as students get in the door, um, we have the leadership approach them, we talk to them, uh, we make sure that we're always open for questions. I always try to give out my email and phone number to anyone in USG and, and let them know that if they have questions or uh, if they're working on something or, or literally just anything, even if just a wellness check, uh, I'm available for them. So um, I think it's really just trying to be as open as possible for all of the new students that come in. And I think some organizations might have a, a formal structure for that, which I think can be valuable, but I think what Alex described regardless of the organization is really important uh, because I think even if it's something you're really interested in, if you don't feel as if you have a connection with someone or multiple people in the group, for a lot of people that's uncomfortable and, I, and that's, that's not the way we want people to feel when they join organizations, but sometimes we get real focused on what we know within the group and so I think Alex's example is a, is a great one in addition to you know, perhaps some more formal structures if that works within the organization. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I, I know Marcus as well, and you and him are both fairly outgoing people, I'd say. <laughs> so, so I think that is a, also plays a part in, you know, getting someone to feel welcome because mm -hmm. they kind of put themselves there. Yeah, and no. uh, in USG or other orgs, have you all noticed, like, any introverted people who might struggle to feel welcome? Uh, you know, how would you go about kind of getting them out of their shell and making them feel like they have a a home, a place there? I would say giving, making sure that everyone knows that wh whatever your role may be within the organization, it's powerful and it matters. And I think Alex does a good job of that. Um, every senator has a, has a special space in USG. And um, I would also say, even if you're hosting a small event, making sure that your passion shines through that so that people come in and they feel like they can connect with you. Even if they aren't the loudest person in the room, they still feel like, wow, the person that's talking feels like this really matters to them. So maybe I can get behind that, or you know, maybe I can learn something from that, or I can connect with that. Yeah, I think going off that a little bit, um, one thing I'm really proud of uh, our exec board this year, um, and Chloe and everyone else has done, is really just been approachable to the new senators. I think that's really important in making sure that uh, you know, they don't see, oh, that's the president, or oh, that's this director, or that director, or a committee chair. I can't approach them. They're way too busy. Um, you know, we always try to get up and, and really encourage students to come talk to us because uh, in reality, it's not, not so much um, kind of ideas being disseminated down. It's really from the ground up. We want senators to be working and bringing their ideas in about what they're passionate about, and that's really where a lot of the work starts from, and um, it kind of helps shift USG for that year. So it sounds like being approachable is a desired quality in a leader. Is that something that you think you might have to like train somebody on? How do you, you know, get somebody who might not be the most, you know, outwardly open person to, you know, present themselves to others as an approachable, friendly person, mm -hmm. you know, 
someone that can connect to a three off the bat? I think um, part of it is just trying to be really empathetic and trying to understand where the other person's coming from. Uh, maybe ask them about their background a little bit, try to gauge what their interests are. Mm -hmm. um, so that way you can kind of open them up a little bit and uh, really just kind of see what makes them tick and what they're passionate about. And, you know, that can kind of get reciprocated when they kind of become a leader and, and they make sure that, the, oh, you know, everyone's kind of different from me. They have different perspectives, but I want to nurture that and I want to grow that and I want to have those different perspectives. And um, I think really just coming into it with that mentality uh, can help set up people for um, kind of being a little bit more open and approachable. So I think another uh, important fact in this to consider is Zoom meetings. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Our favorite. <laughs> oh my goodness, so I know, yeah. I'm sure we're all familiar with the, uh, the awkward sitting in a Zoom room, everybody's got their uh, video off, all mm -hmm. muted, you're staring at blank boxes mm -hmm. with names on them. Do, uh, how many of those um, kind of factors that play into creating a welcoming org, how many of those translate to that same kind of environment what, what do you have to adapt about that to create a similar welcoming environment in the Zoom meeting? I think um, it's, it's, it's a lot tougher and I think it takes a lot more work. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's especially work that has to go on outside of the Zoom meeting to make sure that you're uh, reaching out to those people one-on-one, -on -one, meeting with them, uh, maybe one-on-one -on -one in Zoom, maybe in person, but uh, really trying to make sure that, like you said, they're not just kind of sitting there with the camera off. They feel really disengaged. They don't feel included in the conversation. You want to make sure that um, you can alleviate those feelings as much as possible, but I think inherently Zoom is a very difficult pro uh, platform to um, get that engagement level. I, I was going to say, uh, on the flip side of that, though, I, I felt that <clears throat> particularly at the beginning of this academic year, after uh, having pretty much a year, uh, a year and a half of, of Zoom meetings, that we all needed to transition a little bit back to being in in-person meetings too. Mm -hmm. um, and please know, I, I appreciate the, the opportunities that occur in an uh, in-person meeting, but that felt um, a little different for all of us um, after having been in a, a Zoom room where it's pretty easy to disengage. So I think trying to get people back on track with what that looks like, um, you know, those productive conversations that can happen. Um, but yeah, I think we all had a little bit to relearn mm -hmm. as we went back to in-person too. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's just an element of in-person meetings that you can't really capture over Zoom. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, many campus orgs have seen drop-offs in membership due to the mm -hmm. pandemic. Uh, I know this personally in Falcon Media. I've talked to a student I know fairly well in the criminal justice uh, major involved in various organizations over there. Um, so when the in-person element is kind of scaled back and you have to balance the two, sometimes you have to have your larger meetings over Zoom or like a hybrid uh, mm -hmm. element. How do you keep up engagement, you know, with the people? Um, Something that I've noticed in in-person meetings is that you're still able to have fun while getting work done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As how do you have fun, keep people engaged in you know, hybrid environments? Um, I, I think really trying to maybe do things a little bit differently. Like I know when uh, we first came in last year at USG, we did uh, some surveys, we did like some cahoots. We tried to really do things that engaged outside of um, just kind of sitting there and, and hoping people would uh, be able to speak up and, and kind of talk. So I think uh, sometimes there's a worry, oh, we have to be super professional, this is a meeting, but um, you know, we are also student organizations mm -hmm. and, we're, and we're students and uh, we're here to learn, but we're here to have fun and, and get experience. So I think trying to come away from that mentality of we have to be professional 24-7, um, obviously re remain respectful, but um, try to add some elements of fun into it as well. I think that could help engagement. Yeah, I think another cool idea that one of my professors actually did was um, she would have us take a poll about a fun topic to discuss at the end of class because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. all of them were on Zoom. I'm like, that's really fun. So that kind of yeah. goes into what mm -hmm. Alex was saying, but just like adding in something fun and exciting that gives people a reason to want to turn their cameras on and a reason to want to maybe interact and have that excitement. Okay. okay. Well, I think we've had some solid discussion so far. Uh, Thanks to the three of you for the conversation. Uh, we'll be right back after this break. America, land of the free. 
It's at the core of who we are. Freedom. The freedom to live without fear. To drive through all 50 states. To sleep safely in our own beds. The freedom to jog where we please. To watch birds in the park. To wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because no matter your religion, gender, disability, age, race, all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Thank you. Dad? Just one minute, okay? Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Welcome back to the Student Engagement Forum. Thank you for watching. I hope you've learned something so far, so let's jump back into it. A lot of orgs need to promote and encourage diversity within their organization. The same can be said for social justice. Having a diverse org that acknowledges and considers social justice issues can be very beneficial to the impact they have in their community. For orgs that explicitly focus on social justice, that's natural. But for orgs that might not explicitly focus on social justice issues, how can they incorporate progressive action into their goals? Who would like to start us off? Um, I mean, I can, I can start real quick. I think um, from my perspective, I obviously come from a really privileged background um, from my race and, and gender identity. Um, and I'm very privileged to be in this position. And I think um, part of what I need to recognize in, uh, individuals in my position who share a lot of these same identities need to recognize is that we don't really know everything um, and we really need to bring in really strong leaders from all backgrounds in all areas of campus to um, really help guide us and, and step up and be leaders themselves and um, really take the opportunity to help improve the campus. I would say too I think that as organizations look at how they can um, better integrate social justice. I think we also have to be realistic about what the leaders, what the members of that organization need um, in order to have those conversations or to plan those events. I don't think we can make the assumption that everyone's at the level that they can necessarily initiate. So I think sometimes education needs to happen um, before we can really look to an org to lead those efforts. Uh, I think that um, you know, looking at the membership and the roles 
whether it's the individual or the types of roles that they're playing, I think can also um, play a part. Um, USG is a good example over the years. Um, and, and every president and vice president come up with a cabinet that looks a little bit different, but I think that it's um, not been unusual to have at least one or two positions that have a very specific focus on that type of outreach, um, but it can't just fall to those individuals. And, and so I think that that's important too. I think that a really good way to do that is looking at what started the organization off. Why did you want to start your organization? What is the purpose of it? What are, you, what are you trying to impact in the world around you? And when you're able to do that, you can have a genuine approach to social justice. Um, not everybody's meant to do everything. And when you're genuine and intentional with what you want to impact, I think that that shows through in what you do. And especially being willing to learn from other people, um, I think that that's really good too, so. Okay, yeah. So, um, discussing societal issues of inequity and privileges can be a great step in the right direction. I think this kind of ties into the education mm -hmm. part of it. You know, lessons can and will be learned from talking about social justice openly and honestly. So how can orgs turn those lessons into action? You know, how can you take what you've learned and really do something with it? I think we're blessed to be in an environment where there's um, a lot of different areas to do work in and a lot of different organizations on and off campus are very open to collaborating with students. Um, there's a lot of faculty members that are very open to leading students and student organizations. So I think really just taking advantage, doing outreach, saying, hey, like my organization is interested in learning about this. We're, we're interested in doing service work. We're interested in, in whatever it may be, really taking that leap and just reaching out. I think that that gets the ball rolling. Yeah, I think going off that, um, really just trying to find those areas that you're passionate about. Um, you know, it was about a year ago when uh, Chloe came to me and said, you know, I want to do something for our students on campus that are battling cancer. And, you know, a couple months later, we had planned a breast cancer charity walk. And through le Chloe's leadership, we were able to raise almost $1,000. And that just started from an idea and some people dedicated to working to see that uh, kind of come through and that goal accomplished. And sometimes I think that's really all it takes is a couple passionate individuals really ready to put in that work. Um, and like Jody said, uh, making sure that you're educated and making sure that you're going about it the right way and that you're not um, kind of inserting yourself into a situation that maybe you shouldn't really be mm -hmm. um, and trying to make sure that you're not speaking for anyone or uh, trying to make decisions on behalf of them without their permission or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, so making sure that you're really well informed beforehand. But um, if you are really well informed, I think sometimes it is just kind of taking that step in and putting in the work. Um, and I think too, just collaborating with other organizations that might have more specialization in the area that you're trying to uh, do work in would be really great as well because a lot of times they're looking for people to collaborate with and, and looking for organizations to maybe educate on the topics that they're uh, more of an expert in. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of orgs on campus do a lot of great things on a regular basis. And many orgs, like we talked about, use social media to regularly update their audiences on what they've done, what they've accomplished. Uh, for every org though, especially smaller ones who might not have as much of a following on social media or just around them on, on campus and all that, uh, how can they communicate their, accom their accomplishments uh, effectively to the community? I would say reaching out to other organizations and saying, hey, we're having this event. We'd love for you all to come. Would you be able to um, repost our flyer? Mm -hmm. Or maybe, and then maybe add us so that people want to follow us. Outreach is your, is your best friend when it comes to things like that. And other organizations are excited to, to collaborate. They're excited to tell people that follow them about other orgs. So I think that's a really good way to do it. Well, Alex, I believe I had mentioned earlier about you know the tabling in the union. And I think that's a way that you can have a presence and um, you know, draw some attention to a group and, and it's obviously no cost and, and so I think that whether it's there or education steps or something like that where you can kind of put yourself out there even for, for a short period of time um, can really help increase vis visibility and knowledge about the organization. I think too, um, my background's a little bit in marketing so this is kind of going to be a marketing answer but mm -hmm. 
um, really trying to find your target audience on people that you want to try to engage. So if you're starting, mm -hmm. say, a stock market club, maybe you hang up flyers in the College of Business, or you mm -hmm. go in there and talk to students that are just walking around. Uh, kind of try to figure out those areas where uh, students are more likely to be engaged with what you're um, kind of building and what you're trying to offer students. So you're the president of the Economics Club, correct? Yes. Can you uh, tell us a bit about how that ties into it when you started that org? Yeah, so um, the org did exist prior to COVID, oh, okay. um, but once COVID hit, membership fell to zero. Uh, they changed advisors, so it was basically a new org stepping into that role. Um, and we have a whole new set of individuals working. We're actually planning a conference now for uh, April 9th for College of Business students, and we're really excited about it. And um, like I said earlier, I think it just took a group of really passionate students that wanted to see that through, uh, coming together to put the work into that. Um, I'm really lucky to have uh, a great vice president in that organization, Evan Seiler, uh, who puts in countless hours every single day to, to make Econ Club what it is. Um, and I think, uh, you know, that can't really uh, be stated enough. The leadership that you don't always see in a lot of these organizations and, and that aren't always super visible, um, the work that they do. And I think, uh, you know, just trying to find maybe that one person that you can partner with to start an organization or just making sure that you're not putting everything on yourself and not always trying to do everything yourself. Because at the end of the day, we're all students and we all have full course loads or maybe you're student teaching or you have an internship and there's a lot going on in everybody's life. So um, really just making sure that you're uh, kind of being a leader, but being able to delegate as well and, and work with others and just finding that passionate person that you can uh, really get the ball rolling with. I think another way, a uh, great way to communicate accomplishments is through media. Uh, as a leader in Falcon Media, the student <laughs> media on campus, um, I mean, we always appreciate people reaching out to us. And I think that through this conversation, hopefully, from what I, from what I take from it, we can kind of try to increase engagement, uh, you know, uh, just keep things rolling here. And as we get more members, ideally, we'd be able to cover more things that people reach out to us about. Yeah, I think um, a component of that, too, just to kind of um, maybe be a little bit careful with sometimes if you're trying to promote, like, accomplishments is making sure that you're, like, respecting everyone's privacy. You don't want to be, like, oh, hey, we did this for this specific person. Um, you have to really make sure that you're kind of being really mindful of, of what you're doing and, and how you're approaching it, especially on social media. Uh, you want to make sure you're kind of protecting everyone's privacy and whatnot and, and making sure that you're doing things for the right reason. You're not just doing something uh, to put on social media, but making sure that you're doing the work and then it goes on social media. And speaking of, so, so speaking of social media, what do you all, kind of advice do you all have for growing a social media audience that might not already be there or maintaining one that you might already have. Yeah, I can uh, jump in the, into this a little bit. Um, when I ran for USG president last year, one of the things that uh, we really tried to do extremely well and extremely hard right at the beginning was um, reaching out to students at, at BGSU uh, through social media. Uh, it's a great and simple way to connect with people. Uh, if you just look at people's bio, if it says BGSU, we would follow them and then uh, maybe try to reach out or see what their interests are and um, just try to engage them with USG a little bit and, and what we were trying to uh, accomplish and what we were campaigning on. Um, through that, we gained almost like 3,000 followers on this campus. So it was it was an incredible way to get that engagement. And I think for a lot of people too, too it's just cool to see, oh, hey, like this person followed me and they're reaching out and we go to the same school. And, and if you're not like trying to do it for a student org or if you're just trying to make friends, I think it's a great way to build connections um, and leverage your social media a little bit more. Okay. So student orgs aim to serve students. I think that's a core goal of every student organization. Uh, this is a bit of an abstract question I have. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, what can student orgs do for students? I'd like to kind of talk about it on a broader scale at first, mm -hmm. and then maybe we can move into more specific purposes uh, specific things that student orgs can serve specific needs for students? They can create a safe space, a safe space yes. where students can be themselves and be around people that might enjoy similar things, that might have similar beliefs or values or goals. It can be a safe space. Absolutely. I think, too, uh, in my case, it really, this is going to sound cheesy, but it did kind of change my life <laughs> joining USG and, and making that connection with Marcus. Uh, I came in here as a College of Business student. I still am, but I really didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. And now uh, I'm looking at graduate school for public policy. And the work that I've done in USG has really uh, kind of set me up for what I want to do with the rest of my life. And um, I'm not saying that'll happen for everybody, but uh, it can certainly open doors for you that you might not have ever thought were there. I, I think 
a, an organization uh, really allows students to make connections. And no matter how well prepared a student, student is when they first come here or they're, they're excelling as mm -hmm. academically, you know, I think we're looking for connections. We're looking for the opportunity to um, develop relationships, um, to serve in, mm -hmm. in some way. And I think that an organization does that for people. Uh, can you elaborate more on a connection? I think there's two kinds, a social sure. connection, mm -hmm. where you kind of make friends, and a professional sure. connection that can you know, connect to your career and that sort of thing. Right, yeah, and I think, and, and honestly, it's gonna depend on, I think, the organization, right? Mm -hmm. and, and what the type of work that they're doing and their purpose. Um, but certainly, I think the social connections are strong. I think it's also a connection to the university that, that students feel that they have a place in addition to their academic program. Um, the, the organization might support their academic program or it might pique an interest that, that could lead to career opportunities, but even just um, you know someone who is interested in environmental issues. It's in a way to explore you know, different interests that they may have. So I, th I think that there's a variety of ways that that can happen and it varies a bit depending on the purpose of the organization. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to move back to the uh, talking about a safe space. Um, this might be an obvious question, but why is a safe space important? College is scary. <laughs> it's scary and it's new for a lot of people and it kind of gets the ball rolling on your life as an individual, away from friends and family that are back home, away from expectations from the people that you've grown up around. And I think that to have a space where you can really just kind of let go of those expectations and just exist and enjoy life and maybe grow alongside other people, I think that that's a really, really beautiful experience. So I think that's why. Yeah, and I think too, um, you know, as students come to college, the safe space for the organization that they join might be the first time that they've ever really felt welcomed mm -hmm. in, in their community mm -hmm. or felt comfortable with the identities that they have. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really, really powerful and something that definitely shouldn't be understated. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's all I had, I guess. Is there anything that uh, you three would uh, like to add about what's going on with your own organizations, about what you have planned? Join USG. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, no, but I think no matter what you're interested in, I think um, you know it's going to lead to great opportunities. And like I said, you don't have to stress all the time about trying to make everything super professional. It, a lot of the organizations are just about building those social connections. and. Uh, you know, social connections can even lead to professional connections. So um, I think it's just really important to just recognize the importance of, of student organizations as a whole and just honestly join what you're passionate about. Um, you know, if you are going to join something and you think you're not going to like it, but hey, this might help me in my career, uh, maybe rethink that a little bit and, mm -hmm. and make sure that you're taking care of yourself and, and join something that's going to make you happy and, and not just kind of on the hope that it'll get you a connection or uh, it's part of, you know, your major or something. Yeah. And um, also, the springtime, toward the end of spring, is when USG elections happen. Are there any yes. important dates coming up, or where can students find this uh, information at? Yeah, so um, all the election information uh, can be found on our website. So if you type in BGSU USG, uh, you can go on there and find all of the election dates. Um, you can also find candidate profiles uh, to see who's running and read a little bit about what they're uh, campaigning on. The election starts on Monday the 28th, and so all undergraduate students will have the opportunity to vote through uh, noon on the 30, or excuse me, 8 a.m. on the 31st. So uh, an email will be going out to all undergraduate students next week with all the election details. Yes, that would, that would be super important to mention. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Great. I would like to thank Chloe Cox, Alexander Charlotte, and Jody Webb for joining us for this forum. I'd also like to thank USG Vice President Gil Lutz and USG Chief Administrator Rachel Larson for assisting me in the planning of this forum. I'd also like to thank our director, Jody Smalley, our production supervisor, Jasmine Crichton, and our production crew. Have a good one. <laughs>